Sundays, they fear the Lord. As they carry their Bibles along with them, they fear the Lord. As they sing the songs of Zion, they fear the Lord. But privately, in their heart, in their family, in their houses, when practical things happen, that they shall show they truly fear the Lord, they served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from things. They live after the manner of Gentiles, of the heathen, of the pagan, of the idol worshiper, of the unbeliever. In the public, they say they belong to Christ. In the private, in their lives, they live and act as people of corruption. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, unto this day, unto this day, after their infant baptism, unto this day, after their church confirmation, unto this day, after returning from Jerusalem, unto this day, after having their names in the register of a church, unto this day, they do after their former manners, they fear not the Lord. They reverence not the Lord. They respect not the Lord. They obey not the Lord. Neither do they after their statutes or their ordinances. After the law and the commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, that they're almost Christian. Christian by mouth, Christian by name, but the nature, the, the attitude, the disposition, the character, the behavior does not show they have any connection with Christ. Look at verse 40. In verse 40, how be it, they did not hack him. How many sermons they listen to? And how many things they know about the history of the church, about the foundation of the church, about the establishment of the church, and about how the first church in their village in their town was built. They know about that, but they did not hack in, repent, and believe the gospel. Uh -uh. They did not listen to that one. Come out. From among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, they will not listen to that one. Be a new creature, a new creature in Christ, and let the goodness of God, the grace of God, the power of the blood of the Lamb, let that power work in your life. They did not hack him, but they did after their former manner. In verse 41, verse 41, so these nations feared the Lord and served the graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. What a pity that somebody can attend a crusade and we'll read so many verses of the Bible, and we we'll talk of the change that Christ can make in that person's life, and yet until this day, until this time, it continues after the former manner, the almost Christian, without repentance or faith. Look at Titus chapter 1. Reading there from verse 16. In Titus chapter 1, verse 16, they profess that they know God. They profess, they declare, they testify, they go about, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Everywhere they go, uh, which religion do you belong to? I am a Christian. 
Have you repented? They don't know about that one. Do you have faith in Christ? They don't know about that. Have you believed well, from the depth of your heart that Christ and Christ alone is your Savior? And apart from him, there's no other salvation. And you don't go behind to go and consult all those dark powers. That's the Christian, but the almost Christian. They profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him. The way they walk, the way they do what they do in their offices, are they not the people that join all the corruption in their offices? The people who say that I'm a Christian, and they profess that they know God. Are they not the people that tell us lies, the people that are hypocritical, and the people that join all the corruption in the nation? It says they profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work, reprobate almost Christian in 2 Timothy chapter 3 2 Timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 5 in verse 5 it tells us having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such Turn away in the public as you see them. You won't think of any other. Th this man must be a Christian. This woman must be a Christian. And the way and the way she sings, uh, you know, when she is on out in the kitchen, she's singing amazing grace, how sweet the sound. In, uh, you know, anywhere she is in a vehicle, she's even singing. Uh, it shall be well, it shall be well. And you'll think, look at that Christian sitting by your side, but they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of godliness. There's no power of godliness in them to live a different life, a distinct life, a life that glorifies the Lord Letting their light shine before me so that men who see them and men who know them, who know them intimately, will glorify God for them. It says, from such, turn away. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says, ever learning, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They're ever learning. They don't miss their one Sunday worship service in their church. And they don't miss any kind of, uh, you know, event, Christian event. They're always there. And they're ever learning. But the regenerating power of Christ has not worked in them. Not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Tonight, everything will change in your life. Yeah. You know, I have to tell you where you are before I can pull you up and take you to the place you will be. You will be there. Yeah. I will be there. And everything we hear about Christ the Savior, about Christ the Redeemer will walk in every one of our lives and hearts in Jesus' name. The almost Christian without repentance or faith. Let me come to number two. You are coming to number two. I can't hear you. You will come to number two in Jesus' name. The altogether Christian with reconciliation through faith. Altogether, altogether, anytime, anywhere, as the grace of God, as the blood of Christ, as the goodness of God enters into your life tonight. I said tonight, you will come from the camp 
of the almost. And then you come into the congregation of the all together Christian. We're coming back to Acts chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 28 and verse 29. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. He said that openly. He said that before Paul. He said that before his own wife. And all the people that are there, and all those people, they nodded their heads. They said, very good. I hope Agrippa will understand that listening and sitting down quietly, being attentive to Paul, has not made him a Christian. And examining the Christian values and the Christian virtues, I hope Agrippa will understand that you consider that, you think of that, you meditate on that. Meditation alone, consideration alone has not made him an altogether Christian. And so then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost, thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Now Paul now said in verse 29, in verse 29, and Paul said, I would to God. I would, I would, I pray that God will walk on you and walk on your heart and walk on your mind and walk on your disposition. I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together. Almost and all together. You have to make up your mind because salvation is only in Christ. You have to make up your mind to get to heaven and to escape hell. Only one way that can be done, that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because however good you are, however generous you are, however educated you are, however high you are, however elevated you are, all that cannot save. What saves? Who saves? No other name. The name of Jesus, the earlier you make up your mind, the better. So that, as Paul said, you will not only be almost, but altogether a Christian, such as I am, except these bonds. What Paul was saying is, I am altogether a Christian. I'm suffering persecution. These bonds are there. And he invited them that they too will be like he is an altogether Christian. But he prayed for them that they will not have the persecution he was having. Altogether Christian, how? By reconciliation with God through Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading there from verse 18, it tells us, And all things of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Paul the Apostle said, Reconciled me to himself. By Jesus Christ. Look at Timothy, look at Titus, and look at Epaphroditus. Look at all the people around him with Silas and John Mark. He reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. That's how we became altogether Christian. And he said, he wants that for you. He wants that for everyone here, everyone online, everyone on radio, everyone on the television, everyone here in the world tonight. He wants that same reconciliation for you. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation, verse 19, in verse 19, to wit. That is to say that God was in Christ reconciling 
the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. That is, when you come to Christ, all the guilt of your sin, he'll wipe away. All the pain of your sin and the punishment of the past sin, he will wipe away. And all the consequences of sin, which means finally perishing forever in the lake of fire, he will wipe everything away. Because when you are reconciled to the Lord, he will not impute your past trespasses unto you. And he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The word of reconciliation. Any other thing we're preaching about may give us knowledge. You talk about the dimensions of the ark of Noah. Knowledge. And you talk about how deep the Red Sea was, how wide the Red Sea was, the origin, the source of the Red Sea flowing like this before the children of Israel crossed over. Knowledge. You talk about high, how high the wall of Jericho was and when it was built and who built it. History. History of the wall of Jericho. That doesn't save us. Knowledge. But the word of reconciliation. What you want to hear. What you want to know, the word that comes into you and brings conviction and makes you to confess that Jesus Christ is the only Savior and you want that Christ to save you, to change your life and to transform you and reconcile you with the Almighty God, that is the word that makes you an altogether Christian. And it says the word of reconciliation has been committed to us in verse 20. In verse 20, it says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. Even though you hear us preachers talking, it's God that is pleading with you that is begging of you that if you will not perish be reconciled unto god we pray you we plead with you we can even kneel down before you and say please for heaven's sake please for your own sake please because of eternity be ye reconciled unto god your will I said, you will. The Lord will not allow you to perish. And we preachers, that's why we came. That's why he came here. It's not to entertain you. It's not, you know, all our music people, thank God for what they are doing. They're not entertaining us. They're telling us that we need Jesus in our heart, Jesus in our life. They're telling us that at the mention of the name of Jesus, heaven will stand at attention for your request. That's why all of us are walking together and we're pleading with you that tonight, tonight will not pass you by. You will have this Christ in you, the hope of glory, and you will be an altogether Christian tonight in Jesus' name. And look at Acts chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 19. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be ye converted without conversion. You are not an altogether Christian. Going to church without repentance, you are not an altogether Christian. Having a Bible at home and having the Ten Commandments printed, hanging by your wall without repentance, you are not an altogether Christian. And having water in the bottle and praying over that water and drinking that water without repentance, you are not an altogether Christian. Belonging to the popular church in town, 
He said, look around, you'll find, that's my church, that's my church. And it's the greatest church in this town, the greatest church in this state. I understand, but without you personally repenting and turning to the Lord, you are not an altogether Christian. Tonight is your night. I said, tonight is your night. All the things we're bragging about, about church, about Bible, about whatever, all those things, let's push that aside tonight so that you will not be almost a Christian, but altogether a Christian. How does that happen? Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. You know, sin <clears throat> is like your shadow following you, following you. As you say, I'm a Christian. The fellow you are talking about, it sees your shadow. It sees your transgression. It sees your misbehavior. It sees your abnormal life, unbiblical life. And you say, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I hear, I see the shadow of sinfulness following after you. It is the repentance. It's the turning around. It's the throwing away the yoke of sin in our lives that makes all those things to be blotted out when the time of refreshing of renewal of redemption shall come from the presence of the lord look at verse 26 in verse 26 it says unto you false god having raised up his son jesus sent him to bless you sent him to bless you tonight the heavenly father has sent jesus to bless you you'll be blessed i will be blessed what are you there the lord confirm it in jesus name the father god in heaven sent jesus to bless you what's the blessing in turning away every one of you from his iniquities that's what makes us all together christian i'm coming to number three number three we're looking at the all-time trustworthy christian with richness of fruits richness of fruits in Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 enter ye in at the straight narrow gate the gate that will not take you and idol worship the gate that will not take you and your crime the gate that will not take you and your corruption. You, you know, when we go to church, we we'll go to church with everything we have. And all those things, corruption is there. We go into the church with that. And, uh, you know, the, the transgression is there. We go in with the transgression. Even the concubine will, will say, I'm going to church. Concubine, will you follow me? And we go in with the concubine. You can enter any church. You can go to any church. You can go to any crusade. You can go anywhere with all those wagons of sin and transgression. But to get to the kingdom of God, enter ye in at the straight gate, at the narrow gate that will not take you and your corruption, that will not take you and your concubine, that will not take you and any evil in your life. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. That's the way of liberty, the way of, you know, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I can do anything. That's a broad way. And it leads to destruction. And many there be which go in there. Then in verse 14, in verse 14, because straight is the gate and narrow 
is the way which leadeth unto life, eternal life. And few there be that find it. You'll be among the few tonight. The past rejected. The past thrown away. A new life of renewal, of redemption, of righteousness. In your life tonight, in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 3, we're reading from verse 8. In Luke chapter 3, verse 8, bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance that's the altogether christian if you want to show that you're a real christian and altogether christian all time christian you come to christ nothing in my hand i bring simply to the cross i clinch Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in you. Could my tears forever flow? And my zeal, no respite, no. And my gifts and my sacrifices be very much abundant. All these for sin cannot atone. Thou and thou alone must save. And so you come to Christ. The only Savior, you come to Christ, the eternal Redeemer. You come to Christ and you have him in your heart, in your life, as the only Savior. And after Christ has accepted you and you have received the salvation of the Lord, you go forth now, bring him forth the fruit worthy of repentance. And that is what is taking place tonight in Jesus' name. And you will bear fruit. I will bear fruit. Galatians chapter 5. We're reading from verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The love of Christ, the love of God will be implanted in your heart. Joy. The joy of salvation will be there when you have a clear mind, a free mind, a peaceful mind that my sins are forgiven. He has put my sin in the depths of the sea. The joy of salvation will be yours tonight in Jesus' name. And peace, peace, no turmoil, no commotion, no guilt, no condemnation. You're peaceful on the inside. And when you're peaceful on the inside, you'll be at peace with your wife. You'll be at peace with your husband. You'll be at peace with your children. The peace that comes from salvation will be an ongoing, refreshing thing in your life. And you know your face that was always angry.